five years and has lost none of its passion. Played in front of capacity crowds. Teams led by legendary coaches and magnificent players. And stunning upsets. It's Toledo versus Bowling Green. One more time tonight. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the first televised coverage of the I-75 showdown between the University of Toledo Rockets and the Bowling Green State University Falcons. Inside track on a MAC championship and a trip to the Vegas Bowl. Stay with us. Kickoff is just a few minutes away. This telecast is brought to you by Mid-Am, your local bank serving both Toledo and Bowling Green. If we were you, we'd bank with us. And by Jeep Eagle. Test drive Eagle Vision at your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. Well, everybody seems to have an opinion on how this game will turn out. We got the thoughts from the two head coaches on the game, the rivalry itself. Gary Pinkle and Gary Blackney. We talked with them earlier this week. A great rivalry. We have an awful lot of respect for Toledo. Uh, we've had an opportunity to be successful over the past couple of years, but they've been hard-fought games that can go either way. Both teams in the games right up to the final minutes, um, and, and it's just a matter of good fortune that we've been able to come out on top. Uh, I think this game is going to be as close and as hard-fought as any game we've played to date. We're going in this game on the field. You can just see in their eyes right after the game. I mean, it was now we're now we're getting into to Bowling Green, and and it's a great rivalry. It's as big as it gets. It's, you know, I I tell people that uh, this rivalry here, uh, this stadium Saturday night at seven o'clock is going to be uh, as loud and as intense as any stadium in the country, and it's a uh, it's a great thing to to be a part of. Well, I think everyone wants to have, handle every game in a consistent manner so that you don't have highs and lows. That's, I think that's why most coaches want to do it. But uh, anytime you got a rival game, uh, I don't care where you are in the country, there's special emphasis and there's certain things you do for, for that particular game uh, that you don't normally do. So there, there's a lot of things we do different for this game than, than other games. We were obviously a lot healthier this uh, particular uh, game than we were a year ago. Uh, but, you know, we, we never said last year, you know, we, we had a chance to win the game at the end and we didn't do it, but we didn't talk around and give excuses that, that we didn't have this player or that player. Uh, this year we're healthier. You know, we're a different football team. Attitude-wise, everything a lot different than we were a year ago. And, uh, and Bowling Green's a, a, a different team, a very good football team. And uh, so, uh, you know, there, there's going to be uh, two good teams going at it, and uh, it'll, be a, it'll be a war. Well, the conference race is at stake, so that takes on added significance for this game. It's not just the great rivalry and the tradition of the game in, in, in itself, but the team that wins this game has an opportunity to stay alive, and yet the team uh, that loses isn't out of the race because there's still a lot of football to be played. But it does have great implications, in my opinion, for the conference championship. Well, I, I don't think there's any question about it. You know, we've come up short three years in a row. And, uh, um, that's probably, I have more distaste and more frustration about that than anything I've been a part of, because I've, my background, I usually have won big games, and, and uh, so, uh, you know, this is big, it, it, it's, it's real big, and, and it's a, it, I think it's respect, and I think it's pride, and, and I think it's, it's more than a championship game, um, you know, the respect and pride factor is, is, is big, and, and um, you know, it, it's real important. And there you have it. We have heard from both coaches. Coming up next, we'll set the stage for the kickoff. Stay with us. Flanked on my right by an outstanding quarterback of the past for the University of Toledo. That is Kevin Baker. And on my left, it is a former head coach of the University of Toledo, Nick Saban, who led this team to a co-championship back in 1990. Nick, now the defensive coordinator with the first place, Cleveland Browns, in the AFC Central Division. Right now, we want to talk about the quarterbacks. And uh, who better to talk about that than... Kevin Mager, first of all, Ryan Huzak, uh, Kevin, passing percentage-wise up there, not quite as high yardage-wise as Ryan Henry. Yes, he's been very effective so far this year. As you can see by the statistics, he's 59%. 
807 yards. Uh, his efficiency is 113. Uh, he's run the offense well so far up to date. Ryan Henry, on the other hand, has been a little bit better statistically. Um, as you can see, they've thrown the ball comparably the same amount, but he's thrown for a few more yards, and, uh, and he's, I think he's second in the uh, league uh, in efficiency, 154. All right, let's get Nick Saban in here and get his thoughts on this game prior to the kickoff. Nick, both defenses, well, quite a bit different. BGSU ranked number one in many defensive categories while the Rockets are young and maturing at this point. Right, Bowling Green is definitely a well-coached defensive team. They're very aggressive on defense. Uh, they've done a great job of getting turnovers and have a great uh, turnover margin, which is a very significant statistic in terms of winning. Uh, they have an excellent nickel package. They're very well coached. And they have a great player in Vince Calco uh, as, as a leader at, at linebacker. Uh, Toledo, on the other hand, is younger and experienced, but very in improving defensive team that has played more effectively in the last few games. I think it's going to be a key for them to stop the play action pass uh, of Bowling Green, as well as get some turnovers and control the field position in the game. All right. BGSU has won the toss, but deferred. That means Toledo will get the football. And back at the two-yard line, it is Market Matthews. And up the middle he comes, brought down at the 18-yard line. And number 24 for the Falcons makes the stop there. That's Tom Pate. And so Toledo will start out on offense from their own 19-yard line. I think it's going to be critical for Toledo uh, to be able to control the ball in this football game some and keep their defensive team off the field to some degree. James Briggs uh, coming off the field, hobbling, and then uh, obvious pain. So right off the bat, the Rockets have an injured player. Here we go on offense. To start it out, it's UT and BG here on TV 13. Of course, your quarterback is Ryan Huzak. Your fullback, Casey McBeth. And your tailback in the I formation is Washon Tick. Tyrone Brown is split left. Tyrone Boyd is, or Tommy Boyd is split out to the right. We have a pitch to the left side. It's Washon Tate. He fumbles the football. And UT recovers. Hopping on it. Johnny on the spot. Charlie Webb. And it turns out to be a significant gain on first down. The seven-yard pickup. That'll make it second and three. Immediately, one of the things that Bowling Green is very effective at on defense, which is creating turnovers. Uh, they get the ball out and get it loose. Toledo very um, fortunate to get it back in this field position. Wondering, too, the Toledo offense trying to use a little misdirection there, Coach, and uh, come with reverse there early, or fake reverse, trying to slow that pursuit down. Brunswick is flanked to the right. Split out wide. It's his Boyd. And they hand the ball out to Casey McBeth. Running the right side, not a whole lot of room there, no game. Casey trying to find a hole on the outside. Uh, Bowling Green's running somewhat different defense from what I'm used to seeing. I'm not quite sure what they're in, uh, but went for about a yard there. Casey's running hard. Well, you see that the, the, the Bowling Green defense was overshifted. Uh, against the slot formation there, and Toledo's offense ran right into the teeth of the defense. Third and three, back to the I formation with two tight ends for the Rockets. Pujek under center, McBeth in motion, and they go wide with LaShawn Tate. He cuts it back, trying to get to the sticks, and maybe a little bit short. So the Rockets elect to go with the, the running play there. They're bringing two tight ends, and it looks like they will be a bit short and have to kick it away. Well, you know, controlling the third downs in any any game is a very important down, the most important down in football from a defensive standpoint. It's a great way to get off the field. Also helps control field position when you do it the first rattle out of the box on defense. So Gary Blackney's strategy pays off. They win the toss, kick the ball to UT. Defense comes to the uh, four, and now the Falcons will get the football. Ty Groot back to kick it away at his own 20. Ronnie Red back in... Formation set to receive it at his own 33, and he calls for the fair catch. And that's where the Falcons will take over on offense. 12.39 to go in the first quarter. There is no score. Coming to you live tonight from the sold-out Glass Bowl Stadium. Lee Conklin along with Kevin Mager. Nick Saban, it's the Rockets and Bowling Green Falcons. 
And now the Falcons will be led out by their flying quarterback, Ryan Henry, the junior from Canton McKinley High School. Well, Bowling Green has two outstanding wide receivers on offense, as well as a very fine quarterback in Henry. It'll be interesting to see how well Toledo's defense does here early in the game. I think it's important that they set the tempo of the game right off the bat. And Courtney Davis is your lone back. Split out wide to the left. Is Roddy Red. To the right, it's Ramir Martin. And Ryan Henry under center. Back to pass he goes. Quick pop to Ronnie Red. And he will be knocked out of bounds at the 44-yard line. 